Welcome to Watchacha's Tabletop World, a channel devoted to the love of board gaming. My name is Sweetness Watchacha, and these are my thoughts on Race to the Raft. If you'd like to see a brief overview of the game, click the link here or down below. So let's talk about the art and components. The art is well done. Um, the colors are very high contrast, and I think they're very easy to see, especially for a puzzle game like this. You don't want to be, you know, trying to figure out, like, is this this color? Is this that color? And uh, they also include little symbols and things, like trees or wh whatever, in the in the art itself. So if you have trouble differentiating, col differentiating colors, it can be quite easy to see the board. Now, my only issue really with the production, um, I, I do like the whole production, but my only issue is, like, a little bit of a nitpick where a game like this, um, you know, the fi fire tiles are very nice thick tile, but the cards that lay the pathways down, those are just normal card thickness, and while they are good, and I like those little square cards, and I like the fact that the backs have, you know, the different um, symbols, so you can kind of see what you're going for. Uh, they, when you set them down, any kind of game like this, they tend on a board, they tend to want to spin, uh, and that's kind of what happens now. Every card kind of <laughs> goes into business for itself, um, and that's sort of par for the course with a game like this, where you're lining those cards up. Um, but it's a bit of a nitpick. I'm a little OCD, and I like to have things nice and neat on the board, and then sometimes when you go to let push, put something down, you end up pushing some of the cards or spinning them, and it's just not perfect, I think. So this is a little bit of a nitpick, but it's one thing that I don't like about the production side of it. As for theme, um, you know, it's there, like you're trying to get these cats off the island, but really it could just be just about any other kind of theme. Uh, it's a little bit pasted on. The actions do make sense, you know, and, and it, it, it does help cut down the bandwidth to know like, hey, there's a fire here, The you know, the cat can't go through the fire. So I do like that aspect of it. Um, you know, I, I, I love this kind of thing and I talk about it quite a bit where, you know, I like planning these little multi-nights and I do like that it's sort of connected to this Isle of Cats and it's kind of a cool concept to be able to, you know, play both those games. It's like an excuse to have like a little double feature of both those games. So that's very minor, but I do kind of like that sort of thing. Setup is remarkably fast. The gameplay is actually quite simple. Um, the meat is in the strategy. You know, there's only a couple things you can do. in. Um, so it is a very relatively easy concept to, um, to teach. Uh, the rule book is set up quite well and it includes a um, link to be able to watch a video on it. Something about the way the rule book though, um, it, like it's, it's very well laid out, but for some reason I had a hard time grasping this game and then when I started playing it I was like, oh, I get it now. Uh, I don't know, something about my brain, the way it works. Certain rule books, like some of the Vlada Chattel stuff, um, can be a little bit more difficult for me, but um, but once I got the game, it was totally, totally easy to play. The gameplay was very smooth. Now, I do like the fact that it has the campaign book and plenty of scenarios, and even if that, those 81 scenarios aren't enough for you, which I can't imagine they wouldn't be, uh, you can go online and download more, which is pretty crazy. That's pretty neat, I think. Um, also, I do find it very satisfying. It's very satisfying to go through a uh, set, of, set of scenarios and just say, okay, cool, we beat that one, or we didn't beat it, let's try it again, let's go to the next one. Um, there's a satisfaction. It scratches some itch on you. That, that is, it's just some psychologically satisfying to go through a campaign book or that series of you know of puzzles. It's just something about that is really nice. I really like that. Um, the, it does remind me of certain games like uh, like Sky Team or Magic Maze that kind of have this co it's cooperative games that have these sort of different scenarios or they lead you through kind of a story. Um, however, you know, one miss I think is that there aren't a lot of new rules introduced, and the rules that are introduced are very minor. And I think I would have liked to seen some more drastic changes or some bigger differences or just changing things up a little more because mostly you're playing the same game and there's very slight uh, modifications to that. I, I really like the solo mode on this. Um, what draws me to a solo game is easy setup, you know, fairly quick play and a game that is the same as the actual game. I don't like having to learn multiple sets of rules. Personally, I don't like that. Um, and this game is, it's really easy at the end of the night, set up a game, like five minutes set up, you know, 10, 15 minutes to play or whatever, and you can play a couple of them pretty quickly. And I, so I really do value that. And I like the idea that it's the same exact game. The only thing you're really missing is the communication rules, which <laughs> I'll get to in a moment. The game kind of has a very crunchy feel to it, like a very puzzly feel. It does remind me kind of, I get the same kind of feeling when I do like a crossword or some kind of puzzle like that, logic puzzle or something. Um, it feels the same. I mean, it doesn't feel like a very, like, it doesn't feel like, like, I'm slaying orcs or I'm, you know, growing my crops and I'm going to try this strategy now. It's a very crunchy, it's a very puzzly, very, very puzzly game. Now, 
The biggest thing that wasn't my preference in this game is the communication rules. Um, anytime you get a game with fuzzy or gray or nuanced communication rules, I get a little worried. Often this is kind of done to prevent alpha player, the alpha player, but to me, I always think like, if you don't like communicating with another player or cooperating with another player, play a competitive game. That's just the way I feel about it. In certain games, like take like Hanabi, for instance, you the very, rules are very, very clear. You can, that's mostly the whole game, right? Is the strategy say, you've got two blue and they're here and here. That's all you can say, very easy. Space alert, the CD comes on, it's static and you go, oh, comms are down, we cannot talk. Very done. Games like, um, you know, like Shadows of Camelot, where you might say like, oh, uh, you, you know, you got a three, four, five in your hand, you can say, I am kind of strong in this. I'm pretty strong, I'm very strong. All you're doing is saying three, four, and five, you're just using different words. And I don't really like that. Also, like, I feel like rules like this just lead you to inadvertently cheat, you, and especially if it's cooperative. You say like, oh, um, well, you, all right, well, you know what I'm just doing in there, or you make a noise you shouldn't make. I, I just feel like it just gets, like, it's like, can I play a green? I have some green, I don't have a lot of green. Can I say that? I can, I can kind of say that. Well, my green is kind of moves around. I mean, it's just, and then it gets a little more complicated. There's some additional communication rules that open up later. All in all, like, I like my rules to be very clear and concise. And I think, especially when it comes to communication, it's just something that, like, it's kind of like, I don't know, it's like a hot button issue for me, but I don't care for that part of the game. But especially, like, um, you know, in a game that is a really tight, puzzly efficiency engine, that is sort of like a gum and peanuts in your mouth kind of thing. They just do not go together very well for me at all. Randomness in the game, um, you do draw the fire tiles from the bag and you do draw the cards. And, uh, you know, so you could say, oh, that's like some randomness there. But it's weird because the game is such a tight efficiency puzzle and now you're introducing this randomness. But it really is um, only just making it so it's not deterministic. Uh, I think the, 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 the draws that you make, that's part of the strategy of the game. And I don't think it can, you're really gonna, it's not like rolling really poorly and you're like, well, I guess we lost. Uh, and even if you did, the game is so fast to like reset up and replay, it wouldn't be a problem, but all the luck or the randomness does is break the, make it so it's not just completely deterministic. I don't think the luck plays a huge role. Um, and, and I like the idea that those decks are there and they're able to differentiate like what you're going for in each, you're like, oh, I want yellow, so maybe I'll go with that. But you don't want to deplete that too much because if another player needs to play that or something, you want to leave that for them. So I do really think that's a very clever way of doing the cards and handling that um, that uh, that randomness of the game, which is not much. So the game is quick to play, has a great solo mode. Uh, it's very easy to understand once you get into it. And it's a fun little satisfying puzzle. I don't think like when I'm playing the game, I'm like, oh, this is amazing, this is so much fun. But when the game is over, I tend to say like, eh, I'll try the next one. I'll, try, I'll give the next one a go. And I think, that's a sign of a game that that's a good game. If you think like, hey, I'm gonna try this again, I wanna play this again, I think that's a, that's a good way to go. So hopefully that helps you to decide whether this game is for you or not. If you'd like to see my brief overview on it, uh, click the link below. But now I gotta roll.